right here with St. Paul's football coach Ken Sears and uh, coach. Uh, we talk about this every year, and you know your turnover. I mean, some coaches relish the turnover and being able to see new kids doing different things. And uh, you know, you guys certainly have your share. You're gonna have a new quarterback and uh, some some things going on offense. Let's start with your offense uh, and start with the quarterback position and uh, what is gonna be what's going on there and uh, how do you see that playing out. Well, coming out of spring and summer, um, we're probably going to give Grant Bilson the start. Um, he's really had a good summer. Um, feel like he's a young guy with a lot of potential. Um, Caleb Frost, um, tremendous athlete. We feel like we can utilize him better at receiver. He's got tremendous speed and uh, gives us something at receiver, which is a, a need for us going into the season. So, uh, Caleb will probably get backup duty. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jason Hips has also had a pretty good summer as well. So we feel good going into the season with a little depth there. But, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and go with the sophomore beginning of the season. Uh, looking up at your, uh, your list there, uh, you know, on the offensive side of, of the football, uh, you got an interesting mix, uh, I think, of some, some new guys and, and, some, and some vets, if you want to call them veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk about... And you know as well as I do, the offensive line never gets enough recognition and how right. important it is. And talk about what you got going on up on the line. Well, Jared Mybaum is our anchor. Uh, he's our return starter. Uh, he had a great year for us last year. Uh, has uh, had a great spring and summer. Um, so he's the guy with the most experience. Probably the next guy with the most experience is uh, Brandon Nolan. Uh, he started a few games for us last year. Uh, Max Dufour is a newcomer to center. Uh, he's had a really good spring and summer as well. Uh, Chase McClellan got some time for us, a uh, little time for us last year. Nick Vining at right tackle is going to be a newcomer for us. But we also feel like we got a lot of depth because we played a bunch of those guys uh, in JV and spot uh, places. Um, so going into the season, we feel like we, we've got a good uh, nine guys that can play those five spots. Uh, which helps us depth wise. Talk about uh, your running game and and what you see. You know, again, I look at there. I see some names that I know. Um, and uh, just talk about what's what's different about your running game from last year and, and what you see there. Well, uh, we have Mitchell Smith, Mitchell Smith back and Carter Ely. Uh, right. So both those guys will probably do running back by committee. Uh, Carter will probably play some fullback in certain situations. Uh, we're probably going more to a pro style sets, okay. um, kind of like we did back, you know, way back when. We feel like, you know, our personnel is just suited to that. Uh, Danny Sears will play some uh, fullback and tight end, and uh, Daniel Zuckerman will play tight end. So we're going to play more with tight ends and fullbacks in our in our sets. And having another Sears in there, that's uh, that's got to be exciting for you. And, and, and I hear that uh, that Kenny's coming back to help help coach a little bit. If, yeah, if coach, uh, so that must be exciting for you. Yeah, and uh, can give you gray hair too. But, <laughs> uh, but needless to say, yeah, it's, just, it's special uh, situation where uh, you know I got both my boys with me uh, in the program, and uh, certainly I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. And uh, they're both super competitive, like me, so I'm sure it'll be interesting sometimes. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Kenny will do quarterbacks for us, and uh, and uh, he's done a great job in the development of uh, of our guys so far. So, um, you know, having two brothers on the staff could be a challenge. Yeah, I'm uh, sure because both have a different opinion about things. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to relish every minute of it. Does it make that when uh, you know Kenny senior year especially? I know how you know special season that wasn't for you, but. Does that make things go fast? I mean, you know, it makes it go fast. That's, I tell the kids every year, that senior year, how fast things go, and they don't realize until the end. But it, it, as a coach, does, does it make things go faster for you too? I mean, just, you know, realizing how much time you got to spend, it's not a lot of time? Yeah. Um, just like any other kid, though, you know, it's it's a journey. Um, and, you know, Danny's got a few more years, and, and uh, hopefully Kenny's with us that, that long as well. But, uh, yeah, it's going by fast. Talk about the offense overall. You talk about going back a little bit more to a pro style offense. Uh, what do you see? What do you see overall? And, you know, obviously some 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 turnover there. Uh, how many 
how many guys uh, would you, would you say are returning starters? I mean, you got a couple guys that that played a, that started a couple games, but right. overall, how many time, uh, returning starters do you have? Return starters. Uh, it's lower than you. It's lower. It's yeah. about four. Yeah. About four return yeah. starters. You four guys. I could probably say were full time last yeah. year. Yeah. Now, what what is different? Besides just changing the offense, how hard is that to do with with these guys? I guess with when with the fact that you only have uh, four returning starters, that's kind of the time you, you want to do that because these guys are coming in right. fresh and you know, you know, if you're going to change something, do that then. Well, you know, being a spread offense for the last five yeah, or right. six years, you know, a big challenge for us, you know, going into spring was you know terminology yeah. and uh, yeah. getting everybody on the same page. Uh, in terms of what we're trying to do, uh, try not to change a lot of things in terms of uh, how we communicate to each other and communicate to the kids. Obviously, rules and assignments change, right. but uh, you know, it's. I think it's something that that as a staff, you know, we went all in a pro style situation, and uh, so we all know it, and uh, it just suits our personnel better. It's just personnel driven, you know. And if, through my career, you know, we've gone from playing. Um, you know, a, a flex bone type right, of offense. Right. To, you know, it's all been personnel driven. This is what we do best, and this is what we're going to do. Um, but we feel like that suits our personnel. Um, that style of offense um, will be multiple. Right. You know, we'll get in some spread sets as well. Um, but, um, you know, certainly with, I think, the defense that we have coming up, um, you know, have that ability to run the football. Um, really will help our team. Speaking of the defensive side of the football, and I look up there, and I mean, we know that you got uh, a couple of really kids that you're really excited about going into the season. Um, and everybody talks about Galloway and, and what he's going to mean to this team. And uh, But just talk about the defense overall before we get into the personnel, about how excited you are. I know, uh, you know, this defense has kind of been shaping up for you. This could be a, a big year for you. Yeah, and uh, that's where most of our return starters uh, come back on that side of the ball. Uh, but, uh, you know, I feel like in that area we, we also have depth because, uh, yeah. you know, we play a lot of guys on defense. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Wayne is, is the centerpiece of that. Uh, but also we feel like we have an opportunity to be pretty good uh, in the front seven because we have a lot of experience there and depth. Uh, Ikemina jumps out. Ikemina had a fantastic spring, uh, but we also have depth at that defensive end. We got some newcomers in there, uh, so we will have a good rotation. Um, Jacob Frolic, we moved down to tackle, um, and obviously he was a starter for us. Um, and uh, Michael Crockett uh, had a phenomenal year for us yeah. last year at the other yes. defensive end. Uh, Aiden Richards will play some defensive end as well, and. Uh, Davis Hebe, uh, actually his first year out for football, he's had an incredible spring, great work ethic, uh, and he's really impressed us. So I could see him in there uh, in, in the rotation. Uh, in terms of linebackers, all those linebackers, you know, Miles started for us at Mike, Red started at the outside linebacker. Uh, Brady Loisel and Ian McCarthy both started, played games. Uh, Ian will also give us some depth at safety as well. Um, we really have one newcomer uh, to the secondary, and that'll be Daniel Dufour at, at corner. But he's just, you know, really played well throughout spring and during the summer and seven on sevens, and uh, he's really locked down that position. It's really kind of unusual for you to have an underclassman uh, in, in the starting lineup on defense. I know it happens yeah. every year, but uh, talk about what makes him. Uh, special and well, he's just, he's just got great ball skills. Uh, you know, he he can flip his hips really fast. Uh, he's always around the ball. Um, you know, he's had a good summer in the weight room. Um, you know, he's he's got a great work ethic, um, and he's he's really fared well in all our outings and seven on sevens and um, all our practices yeah. and so forth. So he's really solidified that position. The other corner is going to be Micah Crockett. Uh, who played uh, safety for us last year and, and doubled that running back. And Micah gives us experience at corner as well. Um, Gunnar Dusad 
uh, be in the mix for that other safety. Uh, Gunner was a young guy coming up. He got into a couple games last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gunner will be in that group providing us uh, not only with the kid with ability, but, but giving us some depth. We talk about it every every year as well when we do your preview, but you are just really fond of making sure that during any particular game and you get as much rotation and as much kid, get as much young kids experience as you can. Uh, it's important and it really becomes important times like now when you're heading into camp and in the early part of the season uh, that these kids, have, a lot of these kids have been in games before. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about your philosophy on that and how important that is. Well, we always try to keep fresh legs in there. You know, you play spread offenses, you know, right. no huddle. And, this, and this uh, huddle. we don't want our guys to get worn down. So, you know, we try to fill a bench of, of guys that we can we can count on to get in the game and, and spell some guys yeah. uh, in this age of spread offense. So, uh, But even before that, we were starting to do that just to kind of build depth and build our team, uh, you know, going forward. And uh, – you know, as a result, it's always worked for us. Let's get into your schedule a little bit, and it's a little different this year. There's mm. no car to start off with right. for the first time in, in five years. Um, you start off with McMain, and just talk about your pre-district schedule and what you hope to accomplish. Out of it. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know, we're one game at a time, so, you know, um, Carr, I think, has a commitment with Curtis playing the Dome. Um, and uh, so, you know, that kind of ended our series. Hopefully we'll get back to it in a couple of years. We certainly love playing them. Right. It's always a great game, great competition. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're focused on that first one. And, and uh, pre-district-wise, our annual game with Jesuit Week 2 is always right. going to be a right. tough one. And Destrahan, obviously, is always a powerhouse and a challenge. So we feel like you, those three games are going to get us ready for you district. You lose Carr, but you get Destrahan. And, and obviously, you know, they don't have John Emery, but they still have – a really, really good, solid running back, and you you know that Coach show you know that they're going to be they're going to be a tough team to beat. But you, so you always focus on really having a tough pre district test because you feel like I mean for you that's that's the way to get ready for district. Right? Yeah, it gets us ready and gets gets us used to the type of teams that we'll face down the line. Uh, and obviously, Destrehan is one of those teams. Coach show does a great job, and they just reload. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we know that game's going to be a challenge. You know, that defensive coordinator a little bit, Marshall Scoville, who yeah, has yeah. coached against you for, for quite a few years, whether it be as a head coach or, or an assistant. So, you know, at least you might be familiar a little bit with what you're going to see against their defense. And Malta does a great job, so it will be a challenge for us. Coach, talk about district this year. Um, every year is different. Um, you know, last year there was some dynamic player, but this year uh, there, there's some turnover. But it, it's a very interesting district. I think, as usual, it's, it's, it's kind of open. Um, and you don't know who's going to come out of the mix. You look at a team like Ponchatoula, who's got a quarterback who's headed to LSU. Uh, you know, Slido's got some turnover, but North Shore's got a new coach and probably going to have a solid defense. Uh, but you can run through the district, and Mandeville's got exceptional speed at skill positions. Just talk about the challenges every year, but the, in particular this year, what you're going to have in 6 5 that. I think there's a lot of parity in our league, uh, especially this year. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of these teams have, have a lot of talented players uh, and great coaching. Uh, you know, one team really last year that we felt like, you know, we kind of do a little eval at the end of the year with our kids, and our kids felt like Hammond was Hammond, one of the best right. defenses I, we've played. I didn't mean to leave them out, uh, you know, it's one of the toughest defenses that we, we went up against. So, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any bottom of the district, yeah. and I don't know if there's any top of the district. Yeah. I think everybody's going to be a game by game situation, and hopefully that pre district schedule gets us tough for those battles. Yeah, Hammond's not going to take anybody by surprise this no. year, like they did right. kind of last year. Every coach said that. Uh, you know, people were talking a little bit about Fountain Blue last year, and I think Fountain Blue is going to be an interesting team to watch this year. But, but Hammond, I don't think people expected, especially the defense, like you talked about, they were holding teams that score th 30 points a game to like 14 and, and under. Uh, so this year, people are going to have their eyes open when right. they play them, right? They did a great job. Third-year coach coming in. And he's doing a great job over there. He's got them going in yeah. the right direction. Uh, and I don't want to leave out Fountain Blue. Talk about what Coach Blocker's been able to do in six or seven years uh, there. And th there's a different mindset now. Hey, certainly. I mean, they're, they're right in the mix. And, uh, you know, they have an outstanding running back. And, uh, no question. You know, they, they're going to be right in the mix in district. Uh, good football team, good coaching. And, uh, you know, we'll worry about them. We're playing last. So it's a long way off. So. <laughs> you ha and you have played them last for, for quite a while. Yeah. But uh, 
just overall, what is your sense going into the season? And, and I know you have the same philosophy going in, in every season, but maybe what's one, what some of the one or two things that have you most excited about going into this particular season? Well, I like the new challenge of uh, you know trying something new. I've always been you know if if it, this is you know. A, a personnel driven thing and we need to change some things that there's always excitement with change and uh, you know and I think it's been good for us and I think it's fit us well um, so that along in getting the opportunity to evaluate players during the summer to see the competition between them we always have competitive practices workouts and uh, watching kids battle um, you know it makes them better and uh, you know as long as uh, they stay focused um, I think we have an opportunity to be right in that number in terms of um, being competitive week to week. Uh, but uh, that's the exciting part of it, watching kids grow and develop, you know, through the years and, and coming through the program and uh, seeing their desire and uh, how bad they want it. And uh, down the line, you know, you guys still play Curtis in, in your scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're talking about a team that's – that some people think are the number one team in, in the state, regardless of class, and maybe in the top 10 or 15 in the country. Um, you know, you're the only team that might have to play them in the playoffs. Uh, and again, way down the line, but just just talk about how how strange it is to go through your, you know, you go through your season, and that's not until, you know, just before Thanksgiving, but to, to have a team like that, and then to go in to the Catholic League, it's, you're, you know they all play each other, and you know you're playing somebody different. It's just kind of a strange, uh, strange thing. Yeah, um, and we've seen them in postseason a lot, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, in the very beginning for us, it's always a good measuring stick because yeah. obviously uh, they are who they are, and they do a phenomenal job. And uh, you know, th their ability is uh, always outstanding. And uh, for us, uh, early on, you know, if, if uh, we, we quickly find out what we need to work on. Yeah, we yeah. quickly find out what we need to work on, and that's always a good stick for us going into the season because we still got a couple of weeks to adjust things and, and do things that we need to do that we feel like we need to get better at. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, and then we wind up seeing them in the end. So Well, I don't know how many times you're going to face the VR offense uh, in, in during the regular mm -hmm. season, but it will, I mean, at least, you know, help you. I don't know if kids have short memory, so three months later but but it's always and then Rummel and uh and the Jamboree Rummel and the Jamboree is always a challenge always a really good football team and uh, I know the new coach yeah that's so uh I know he's excited and uh, not all that new in the grand uh, scheme of things you know I mean, right you know, but uh you know that they, they certainly present two challenges for us before yeah. we start our schedule so I and like I said I like good competition and and, and getting the, the kids sword sh sharpened, so to speak. I kind of tell them that all the time. That's good going into the season. Lastly, Coach, just uh, overall, you have the same expectations uh, every year. Uh, do you have the same, do you tell the kids kind of the same things, or does it depend on the personnel and change up? I mean, and specifically, what are your expectations for this year? You, you know, I'm going to tell you, we're one, I know, I know one game at a time, we'll add them up at the end. But, uh, you know, our expectations is to compete as hard as we can, you know, every, yeah, every yeah. play, every down. Um, that's why we make our our system and everything we do uh, in the off season so competitive. Um, you know, we're going to prepare well. And, uh, you know, our expectation all the time is to take them one at a time and win a district championship and get to the uh, get to the dome, win a state championship. So, I mean, that's always there. You know, we talk to our kids about that, but the only way to get there is to do it one game at a time. 20 years doing this, uh, what's the biggest difference in 20 years for you? The biggest difference? That's hard to say, Jim. I, you know, I, uh, I still love doing it, still have energy to do it. Uh, um, Probably one of the biggest differences. I've got two sons with me yeah, doing right. it, so right. uh, if I were to point out anything, so I'm real excited about that and 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 being being with them. You think you'll um, still be wearing this shirt and doing this 20 years from now? If I live that long, <laughs> yeah. If they don't kill me, Coach Ken Sears, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Right. Thank you.